오케이 아는 <laughs> so, I'm gonna take the that. Continue to have the Syria. So, let's go. Track Eisen in the north of the Fens of Nog. Where's that? Okay. Right, right, going the right way, yep. Toma, this is as awful as I remember. I'd hoped I'd never have to drink it again. Are you all right, <laughs> Eleanor? Is this your um, second experience with the Corsair Scourge? No, second I had experience? it for a different reason. In the Abbey, it's tradition for initiates to drink Solitoma as part of their welcoming festivities. Sounds wow. like hazing to me. <laughs> when everyone shares the same experience, drinking something so shockingly revolting, our bonds are strengthened. It's a mm. good thing. If you say so. I really did believe I'd never have to taste it again. <laughs> to be blunt, <laughs> I hate it. You're lucky you think it tastes so terrible. That means you also know what tastes good. Right, Velvet? <laughs> what does that mean? Velvet can't taste anything okay. aside from blood. What? Is that because she's a demon? I'm aware of one other flavor. Mogulu? Here's your dose of solitoma. No! Get back here! <laughs> Don't! Keep that salad away from me! I, I see. Okay. The sweet taste of another suffering. Sorry, I was doing also a quick sound check. Why does it seem like everyone around me is completely mad? Yeah! Continuing to fight when you know you'll lose just is insane! Would you stand around and watch your comrade die just because you're scared? I wouldn't want to, but getting myself killed wouldn't save anyone either. Yes, it would be illogical to fight. Is hmm. being illogical really that bad? Well... Is it? At the Empyrean's throne, I remember Velvet standing despite the horrible pain she felt. Rokuro is training with all his heart in order to defeat his brother Shigure. And Kurogane used up his own head to forge a powerful blade. None of that is very logical. Yeah. yeah. I don't know quite how to put it, but I think it's all amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you forgetting someone? Hmm? Uh, Magi Lu is traveling with us. Even though she doesn't care. <laughs> and that... Yes, go on. I don't really understand what that's about. Uh. <laughs> oh, Miss Mogulu, hang in there! <laughs> <laughs> well, it is amazing in some sense, I suppose. <laughs> uh. This way. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's just not possible. But the High Priest hasn't been seen since then. How do you explain that? 
I heard some people from the capital say that he might have been attacked by demons. The Abbey's trying to cover it up, but the truth is getting out. The security at the palace is better than anywhere else. Demons breaking in? Inconceivable. But what if a whole horde All assailed right. the castle? Huh? The exorcists guarding the palace are elite. The best of the best. Horde or not, they couldn't have gotten in. But what if they were some sort of giant demons? No matter how elite the guards may be, they'd have trouble against something like that. If giant demons appeared in the capital, there'd be an uproar. I understand your concerns, but please remain calm and trust us. Panic and confusion is just what the demons want. They'll use it to slip into this very town. Well, we know that, but <laughs> still! It looks like rumors from the capital are spreading. The more chaos yeah. there is here, the easier it'll be for us to move around. True. Let's go. Guessing we go over there. Uh, Buranak Plateau. Loringen Tower lies beyond the Burnak Plateau. Blah! If you're gonna set up an obvious trap, couldn't it at least be someplace more convenient? I mean, yeah? True? Wouldn't it be more... someplace more convenient? I don't know. I mean, she had a point there. Give me that. Nope. I'm just seeing what's over here. Gave me that. Huh. Huh? What's wrong, Lafayette? said. I was just wondering why Aizen and Zavid can't work together to find Eifried. All men their age care about is their reputation, their street <laughs> cred. Such a hassle. Oh, really? Well, I can't fully deny it. <laughs> <sighs> the same could be said of women, and of everyone, really. Yeah. It's hard to work alongside someone unless you strive to understand their thoughts and feelings. And if you can't? Well, um... It's like Zavid said. You start talking with your fists instead. Sounds harder than I thought. <laughs> and... It's over here. Ooh, give me that. Another cat. Angel Halo. Okay. Mm, this way. How do I... Looking at the controls, hold on. Let's 
see, how do I get to... Oop. Whoop. This way? Yep. Eisen! Did you get the medicine to the ship's crew? Yeah! Yep. Good. My thanks to you. These soldiers won't be happy in the morning, but they're alive. Is this your work? No. They were like this when I got here. It must have been Zavid. Mm. He didn't kill a single one. Interesting. The Abbey is going to great lengths to arrest him. Even so, he clearly knows he's walking into a trap. What I don't get is why he roped me into all of this. Yeah. If he didn't want my help, then what need did he have to play the Eifried card on me? If you knew this was a trap, why did you come? To see for myself. Huh. When I met Eifried, I was wallowing in despair that I would ever find a way to break the Reaper's curse. Stop denying reality, he told me. If you were really born with that curse, then it's a part of you. But if the Reaper learns to grasp the wheel of his life, even he may find his creed. His path through stormy waters. And so, I joined him aboard the Von Eltia. Okay. A creed of life. Let's say someone's murdered the captain. If it came as the result of him living life on his terms, I could accept that. <sighs> mm. But if anyone, and I mean anyone, tries to crush his way of life, I could never forgive them. <laughs> Who's there? Yeah. It's rude to eavesdrop. <laughs> if you got secrets, talk about them at home. Zavid, isn't there any way you and Aizen can work together somehow? Not Aww. if he's going to keep, keep acting, acting like, like this. this. <laughs> Breaky. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's how it is. What was the point of all that posturing? He could have just stayed hidden. Weirdo. Can't disagree there. Yeah. Loringen Tower is a training ground for exorcists, right? Yes. It's a great edifice built on ancient ruins. Luffy said. Did you ever go there when you were yeah, tethered to you? Teresa? I don't really remember the beginning of my service to Teresa. I see. What sort of training do they do there? Exorcists are tested and assigned Malachim equivalent to their aptitude with mana. It's also where they practice Malak arts and study our laws. Mm. So the lower ranks use it as a sparring ground in order to train up to the higher ranks? No, an exorcist's affinity to mana is not something that strengthens through training. We are given Malakim based on our inborn ability, then learn arts to suit that ability. Okay. So, an orderly is an orderly for life, then? Correct. There'd be no spirit of competition, then. Don't they want to get stronger, to advance through the ranks? There'd be no purpose to advancement. Rank signifies nothing more than the type and number of Malakim one can tether. People join the Abbey for only two reasons. To protect people from demons, and to save the world. Are all of you that dedicated to asceticism? How sickeningly noble of you. I wonder if your wills are suppressed just like those of the Malakim you use. Deviants like you could never possibly understand our motives. In any case, that is who awaits you at Loringen Tower. So we're in for a rough welcome. I say bring it on. <laughs> I can't wrap my head around Zavid. Hmm. We witnessed his unwillingness to kill before, but it seems he's quite serious about it. Maybe that's why I don't feel scared of him. Even when he and Aizen were about to fight, I didn't feel tense at all. <laughs> Perhaps that's just because you've been around Velvet a bit too long, kiddo. Next to her, few people are frightening. Do you think so? Don't ask me. <laughs> he doesn't come across as vicious. I think that's why you're not scared. Because <laughs> he's just a brawler? A brawler? <laughs> Maybe he's just naive. Okay, so he's just a naive brawler. He's still involved with Eifried's disappearance. And he's also taking on the Abbey. I just don't get him. Me neither. Yeah. Uh-huh. I agree, but... I don't understand any of you, either. Hmm. 
Hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Give me a second. Let's see. Okay. I was just checking something real quick. Let's see. Head northwest to... Oh, I see. I don't get it. Hmm. Get what? Why get did what? Eifried let Aizen join his ship, knowing he carried the Reaper's curse with him? What good did it do? I just don't see the reason behind it. Well, if it were me who had that curse, it would mean that you and Velvet could die because of it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Huh. If that's the case, then... I'd feel like I'd both want to and not want to be close to you two. And uh -huh. I'd probably really, really hate myself for it. Do Aww. you suppose that's how Aizen feels? But Eifried still took him in. Yeah. He agreed they put up with the curse together. It's all a bit hard to fathom. Well, if one thing's for certain, it sounds like Eifried's a very strong man. <laughs> At least for a base lawless pirate. Aizen, huh? can I ask you about that thing Zavid had? It belonged to Eifried, didn't it? I've read much of the Abbey's archives and weaponry, but I've never seen anything yeah. like it. He found it when we crossed to the far continent. It's a relic from a long-vanished civilization. Hmm. He's like me and can't resist a good treasure. But of everything we've found, that one was his most prized. What is it? Yeah, what is I it? I can't say. It seemed like a weapon, but Eifried wouldn't let anyone touch it. He went off and tested it on his own, then came back all grinning, saying he had an ace up his sleeve the next <laughs> time we got into a fight. Then it's definitely some sort of ancient combat device? Maybe. But why is Zavid looking for Eifried? To apologize for stealing it? He doesn't seem like that much of a gentleman. <laughs> Did he really steal it? What do you mean? It's just my feeling, but... Zavid doesn't seem like the type of Moloch to steal something so precious. He said he just picked it up. Perhaps he's trying to return it. Perhaps. Perhaps, but... You, you never know. Let's go. Anything around here? No one on guard? They're really not bothering to hide this trap. They probably knew we'd sense Yeah, they it. probably knew. The question now is just what they're planning to spring on us. Anyways, like I was saying, is there anything around here I can collect before we go in there? Oh. What about over here? No? Okay. Let's go. Oh, real quick. Real quick. 
go in to do that. Because why not? All right. Okay. Oh. Oh, there's a lot of stuff we can collect here. This way. Oh, chest. When and how did Ifri disappear exactly? Yeah, how? And how did you two meet in the first place? You know, you ask an awful lot of <laughs> questions about us. What? I don't mean to pry, really. Perhaps it's a habit I picked up from my work. Drat. It seems I've been digging too hard. <laughs> no matter. Ifri vanished about a year ago. <sighs> he agreed to fight a duel against someone and secretly left to meet his opponent. Mm. Once we figured out what was happening, we rushed to the scene. But all we found was the aftermath of a fight, and a pendulum. Was Zavid his opponent? Given his choice of weapon and his ability to fight, I'd say it's likely. What I don't get is why Ifrid would end up captured and imprisoned by the Abbey after a fight with a stray Moloch. The Abbey had him prisoner? On their island. Until an exorcist named Melchior took him away, that is. What? Lord Melchior did? The Abbey would have captured Ifrit about a year ago. Surely it must have caused quite a stir. Yeah. I, I was simply patrolling. I wasn't involved in any such operations. Oh. But I do remember that we suffered a great number of casualties around that time. I never heard why. Mm. And when I went to investigate, I found no records of any major deployment. And then I was ordered to cease any such investigation. By Lord Melchior. That's fishy. Mm. He wanted to hide something, clearly. And I think I'm starting to get a picture of what it was. And... It involves yeah. the Abbey? Maybe. What's in here? Oh, a lot of... This stuff. Uh -huh. can go in here. Eifried. So, this is Von Eifried. This has to be a trap, I'm sorry. Eisen, it's good to see you again. So you're alive. You could have sent a letter. <laughs> when have you ever written a letter to another man? True. Aside from my little brother, not even once. Your brother? Ah, yes. You told me that once. <gasps> huh? Eisen, why? He knew. I've got no brother. It was a trap. Enough of your tricks! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for luring him out. I owe you one. Zavid. Hi, now come Zavid. on out, you old coot. Lord Melchior. 
breaking through my double illusion. Impressive. I make it a point not to fall for the same tricks twice. Hm. I shouldn't have let you get away last time. I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> what? Why am I here? Hmm? Her consciousness has returned. So that is its power. Oh boy. Ooh. Uh-oh. He turned her into a demon. What? Yikes. This can't be happening. Oh boy. A chain reaction. Your reaper's curse is quite the dreadful affliction, isn't it? Mm. Don't you run away! Goodbye. Heads up! Wyvern's coming! We're really fighting all three of these? Why would an exorcist create a demon? Hey, worry about that later. We've got damn dragons to take care of. Just see what she has real quick. Set art. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 uh,
Looks like you got caught in your own trap, old man. Oh, are you sure about that? Hmm? Ha! Huh? What the? I'll take care of the last one. Okay. <laughs> oh. Why? Seriously? Why? He just saved the wyvern? You folks jump in and kill without a second thought. Is that your creed? Marvelous. Your Siegfried is just the power I've been looking for. Um... What? My work here is done. The hell did you do? Wait, damn you! Follow them! All right. Oh, level up. Where the I, hell did they go? Find them. They can't have gotten far. Outside? Probably. Damn. You sure got some speedy legs for an old fart. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're okay, Zavid. It's not me that I'm worried about. Melchior was highly interested in your weapon. Yeah. And yet he didn't steal it. Surely a legate like him could snatch it if he wanted to. Why bother stealing it? When you can just copy its hidden formula. Yeah. Some arts can decipher the workings of other arts in a split second. Hmm. And guess what Melchior's specialty is? As he left, he said, My work here is done. The Abbey must mm -hmm. have some use for that unknown art. Who knows what? After all, they brought it here from another continent. <laughs> Interesting. We'll find out what they're after and crush it to dust. Let me ask you just one question. Why do you have Siegfried? Yeah. I'm counting on you, he said. Back when I served the Exorcists, they sent me on a mission to capture Eifried. Savid, you were once their slave? Yeah. My mind was under the influence of Inominat's domain. Hmm. But when Eifried aimed this baby at me, one shot was all it took to open my eyes. The fight we had after that was one for the books. Huh. <laughs> he might have been a human, but that guy was a beast. Put a song in my soul. But then Melchior had to jump in and spirit Eifried away with one of his damned illusions. <laughs> that old bastard! Playing tricks with people's minds. But why'd he grab Eifried and not Siegfried when he had the chance? Yeah. He probably didn't know at the time that this guy was the real prize he was after. But Eifried knew. Right before he was taken, he distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. <sighs> mm. Well, that's all I know. Whether you believe me or not is up to you. Got it. We're done here. Okay. Huh? That was easy. Eifried only says I'm counting on you to people he trusts. <laughs> Is that so? So, what are you gonna do now? 
Yeah, what are you gonna do? Gonna keep looking for Eifried. So gotta give this back and settle our score. I doubt you have much time left to get that done. <laughs> I'd hazard a guess that until now, Melchior was unaware what Siegfried could really do. Yeah. In other words, he and the exorcists weren't able to interrogate anything out of their captive. <laughs> and now that Eifried's no longer needed, I see no reason for them to keep him alive. Yeah. <sighs> you think I don't know that? If you really want to save Eifried, you probably ought to team up with us. Nope. No can do. Okay. Why not? You lot will do anything to achieve your goals. Even kill. <gasps> Sorry, I'm a fighter, not a killer. I won't steal a single life. That's just my creed. And I've got no intention of changing our pirate creed either. Hmm. Eisen and Zavid have their own Sorry. creeds. They both have such strong principles, even though they're so different. Just like humans. Hmm. Well, that was sure something. Melchior and his illusions are cheats. There's no cheating in combat. What I meant is that they were awfully dirty tricks for an upstanding yeah. exorcist. And the illusion seemed so real. Had that gone on any longer, I wouldn't have been able to tell what was real and what was fake. Hmm. If it can't yeah. be distinguished from reality, perhaps one could live a happier life within the illusion. Hmm. That sort of happiness can rot. You think so? <laughs> but by using illusions, you can defeat an opponent without causing them any physical harm. Oh, how humane. Wow, the Abbey is so great. Lord Melchior <laughs> is an exemplary man who has served Lord Artorias since before the Abbey's founding. He's done everything from logistical planning to defense strategy and even political negotiations. He shows the utmost concern, even for his opponents, so... He turned a friendly Moloch into a dragon. Th mm. That was... Physical wounds can heal. Emotional wounds never fully fade. Yeah, but... Don't lose heart, Eleanor. Foul play is foul play, but you're talking yeah. to a demon and a witch. Who can judge? <laughs> I appreciate that you're trying to console me, but as an exorcist, I cannot accept this. Alright then. And... Then... I'm guessing... Okay. Let's see. Hmm? I thought I smelled someone pondering. What's on your mind, Lafayette? I know What's Siegfried up? comes from another continent and all. But do you know anything else about it, Ropero? Nope, can't say I do. All I care about are swords. That contraption doesn't interest me much. <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. But it looked real powerful. Just guessing based on how we saw Zavid use it, I'd say it amplifies his power somehow. An amplifier. Mm. Amplifier. It's true that he seemed to get stronger when he fired it at himself. Yeah, and it gave that dying legendary wyvern enough strength to escape. But yeah. wasn't it also what he used to dispel Melchior's illusions back there? That was also amplification. The Malachim are the source of his arts. The relic pushed them past their limits and... kablooey. Suffice it to say, hmm. it can be used both offensively and defensively. It must be very hard to master. More important is what the Abbey plans to do with it. Not that I really care. <laughs> Um, Laffy said? May I ask you something? What is it? The girl with the umbrella from Lord Melchior's illusion. What is her connection to Aizen? I don't think he'd answer if I asked him myself. I don't know. I don't know. I was wondering about her as well. She was pretty, wasn't she? Oh, so you like a girl who's cute, but with a bit of sophistication. Uh, really? 
Well, I thought his type was more like vel- <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? We were discussing a delicate topic. Muffy said's first crush, if you must know. Oh. No, we weren't. We were just talking about the Umbrella Girl from the Illusion. Hmm. The Umbrella Girl. That illusion made Aizen hesitate. Yeah. She must be really important to him. Indeed. Sister, it must maybe? be a deep, naughty relationship. Come on now. Like a wife he wants to leave, but or... he can never let go. Or, or a yeah. mother from whom he can't move on. No, that's too wild. And she's too young. Yeah, it's not that. What's more likely for a self-serving pirate is a daughter from a woman who only knows him by a fake name. Perhaps one whom he cast aside, or who cast okay. him aside. And maybe she was somebody he couldn't marry for some reason. But when she died, he raised her daughter for her. He had been friends with her since they were children. But they only realized okay. their true feelings after they had been married to someone else. Is this their <laughs> idea of romance? In any <laughs> case, beware of girls, Luffy said. Right. <laughs> End this quickly. Devour! Okay. I keep looking at the map. This way. Oh, I'm sure you guys probably have already seen it, but with... Oh, hang on. Hang on. This big storm came and swept me out to a Class 4 island. And let me tell you, it's as bad as the rumors make it sound. I wanted to just wait it out in a shipyard somewhere, but then the water turned all gooey. 
Then I had these jellyfish things coming onto the deck, and before I knew it, slugs were swimming around in the damn ocean. Wouldn't the salt mm. in seawater mess up a slug? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but these weren't no sea slugs neither. It was scary, I'll tell you that much. You want my advice? Stay the hell away from that island altogether. But if you do go, watch out for that gooey stuff. Okay. What did that pirate mean by class four? Mm. I've never heard of that. It's a classification the Abbey uses to help inform their strategy. An estimation of how well they've been able to manage the demon outbreak in an area. Mm. Administrative zone classes 1 through 3 have been assigned a suitable contingent of exorcists to guarantee the population's safety. So... Class 4 administrative zones are ones that are still unsafe? In a perfect world, the entire kingdom would be protected, but there's just not enough manpower to go around. The Abbey doesn't send exorcists to remote areas in far-off islands. Instead, they avoid casualties by making those areas off-limits. Okay. But that pirate mentioned he'd come close to an island. Are those policies actually enforced? They send out an official notice to stay away, and that's all. It's not like they could blockade every tiny remote island out there. So you're free to dive into the deep end if you want. But no one will come to your rescue. Hope you know how to swim. <laughs> if they could keep the demons in check, they wouldn't have to tell people to stay clear. Frankly, I think the Abbey just doesn't want to go near places like that. In other words, yeah. these are dangerous places that the Abbey has washed their hands of. Makes you wonder how much they can administrate these places when they're not willing to get their hands dirty. <laughs> are there many Class Four administrative zones? I've heard of ten such regions in my time working as an inspector for the Abbey. But I'm afraid I couldn't tell you their exact locations or their current status. If okay. the Abbey abandoned this island, it's probably safe to assume that it's getting to be pretty dangerous. If we go there, we're gonna wanna be prepared. Yeah. Anyways, like I was saying, I don't know if you guys saw, probably did. Um, there was a live stream today on the Life is Strange channel about the new Life is Strange double exposure, which I'm very excited to play that because I'm a huge Life is Strange fan since it came out in t this first one came out in 2015. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm definitely playing it, 100%. First mate! You're all right! Sorry to worry you. And the captain? It turned out to be a fake. But now I know the real one's still alive somewhere. Yeah. Well, of course he is. Not that he has a lot of time left. What do you mean? Calm down. I'll explain later. Eisen! Excuse me. E you stay calm too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and you've all taken your Aww. salatoma? Yes, sir. And nobody died? All still kicking. Compared to your curse, sir, the sickness was tiny potatoes. All right. Then let's get ready to sail out. Already done, sir. We're ready whenever. <laughs> <sighs> the Pirate's Creed, huh? There's worse out there. <sighs> Head to the southern port city of... Okay. Oops. It's too bad that wasn't the real eye freed. But I'm glad everyone <laughs> on the ship is feeling better. Yeah. Though it sounds like they never want to touch that Salatoma stuff ever again. <laughs> what about Eleanor? Yeah. She took it too. And her face went all... Wah! I don't mean how she looked. I mean how she actually feels. Oh. Well, she looks like she feels better too. Good. <laughs> You're worried about her, aren't you, Velvet? No. Uh. It's nothing like that. 
She does. Let me tell you something, kiddo. When young maidens ripen, they have trouble expressing their feelings. So Velvet's... ripen? Mogilu! Quit giving Loppy set confusing thoughts! <laughs> <laughs> no trouble expressing those feelings, I see. Oh boy. The Abbey is supposed to exist to bring peace and order to the world. Everything the Abbey does, mm. everything Lord Melchior and Shepherd Artorius do, it ought to be rooted in that mission. And yet, something just doesn't feel right here. You are dismissed. That knowledge is not for you. Uh. <sighs> something wrong? Whoa! Easy there. Just yeah. asking. S sorry I was just deep in thought. Is there something you need from me? Nah. Just heard a bunch of sighs and wondered if you were feeling sick or anything. No, I drank my Solitoma juice. Ah. Mm. Tasted like crap, didn't it? It... <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Hey. What? Are you afraid of demons? No, I, I am not. Yeah, you are. It's more like I despise them. Ten years ago, a group of them attacked my village. They destroyed everything and everyone. Including your family? Yes. Mm. The only family I had at that point was my mother. And in all the chaos, yeah. she... All I have left of her is this hand mirror she gave me. I wonder what that was. I didn't want anyone else to have to feel the way I did. And so I became an exorcist in order to destroy demons. So you can keep your pity. Gotcha. I will then. Okay. What is that? What is that? That's called a pangyon, a type of bird native to this area. Hmm. Pangyon. Their meat is succulent and tender, and makes a lovely stew. Wow, what's it taste like? You'd eat that poor thing? Savage. You're one to talk, demon. <laughs> it was one of my mother's specialties. All right, enough of the chit chat. Mogilu, what's this grimoire friend of yours like? Hmm. Well, how do I put it? What? <sighs> oh. You know, like that. Like what? Like what? Uh, well, to put it in a way those of meager imagination can understand, Grimm's got a sort of listless, aristocratic air about her. A noble woman in her twilight, you could say. Okay. Huh. So you mean, like a woman, but different from Velvet and Eleanor? Hmm. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I tell you what, just keep an eye out for a grown woman. <laughs> uh, grown woman? Okay, I got it. <laughs> well, since we got her name, we could start by asking around. Exactly. Now you're talking. <sighs> What's up, kiddo? Moggy Lou, you're a grown woman yourself. So why is it you have trouble clearly expressing your real feelings? Mm. Good question. Yeah. Put simply, a long time ago, mine broke. Bagow! Chapoom! Bye-bye! Your feelings broke? 
How... Okay. Come on. Let's question the townsfolk. Whoops. It's become common practice to use South Gan lumber for shipbuilding. Hmm. But there's a reason. Our trees really are the best for it. Natan trees only grow in South Gand. Their wood is light, tough, and doesn't rot. Perfect for shipbuilding. You know your stuff. <laughs> Long ago, before people knew how to build seafaring vessels, Mid Gan and South Gan were separate countries. Then our ancestors fashioned rafts out of Natan logs and floated all the way to Mid Gand. A Midgan craftsman, amazed to see a humble raft hmm. cross the open sea, okay. returned with our ancestors here to Southgand. He had used the natant logs to build a large, sturdy ship. Thanks to him, commerce took off between Midgan and Southgand, and the age of exploration began. The excitement of a new age had everyone floating on air, but within mere decades, Midgan declared war on Southgand. Ironically enough, it was ships made from trees from their islands that enemies used to invade them. The fighting continued for a long time, but in the end, Midgand emerged the victor. Our islands were occupied. As hard as things were, our ancestors still liked to joke about it. They'd say, Age of Exploration, more like Age of Exploitation. <laughs> when things were that bad, they could still joke about it? South Ganders have always been a cheerful bunch. We tend to look for the silver lining in every cloud. It may not seem like it these days, but South Gand used to be a place where the laughter would never cease. Some people even used to call it Shenanigand. Shenanigand? This must have been a really fun place. Still no leads on that grimoire lady. Mogulu, when did you get that letter from her you mentioned? Hmm, hard to say. It must have been last year? A decade ago? Take this seriously or I'll feed you to the sharks. Oh gosh. Oh, what? I think I'd at least rate a kraken. Keep this up and I swear I'll eat. It's uh -oh. them. The final preparations are complete. Once you've assumed your new post, everyone will act on your command. Thank you, sister. But to be honest, I worry that these shoes I'm filling might just be a bit too big for me. You need not <laughs> worry. You possess a special strength and quality that others lack. 
Shepherd Artorius has high hopes for your deployment to Polymedes. Fear not. Just be yourself and you'll do fine. Believe you're a leader, and you will be. Yes. I'll try to make you proud, sister. They're sending him to Palamedes? Is that the name of a facility on this island? I had better get going. Safe mm. travels. Okay, then. Oh, one more thing. Be careful around the demon and Haria. It's stronger than it looks. We've even had some casualties. Understood. Also, if you must drink the water, remember to boil it. Sister... She's sounding like a <laughs> I know, protective I know. older sister. I know, I worry too older much. Older sister? But I just can't help myself. So, there's a demon in Haria. Sounds like it's a pretty feisty one, too. Yeah. If so, it may prove useful. Still, what magical timing for Oscar to show up here at the very same hour we do. <sighs> I understand your suspicion of me, but have you any proof? Yeah. None, it's true. But as an exorcist, you're certainly sympathetic to the Abbey's cause. Yeah. And soon you may wish we were sympathetic. Hmm. Eleanor hasn't been snitching on us. I'm sure of it. And how would you know? Are you watching her even when she's taking a bath? Huh? <laughs> Bro. No, I don't. I... I always stay outside when she's taking a bath. And... <laughs> Then isn't it possible she's communicating with the Abbey in secret while you're not there? Yeah. You pledged to obey me until the day you die, correct? Yes. That I did. Remember, when you two trade blows, only the Abbey wins. One less demon, and one less traitor for them to worry about. Yeah. While we're standing around here arguing, that demon could be attacking Grimoire! <sighs> it's true. Yeah. Let's find some more people to question around town. So what's it really like? Huh? The connection between Moloch and Vessel. Do you share, like, thoughts yeah, and do feelings? You? Um... Sort of. When I'm dwelling inside Eleanor, I can see what she sees and hear what she hears. But I can't read her thoughts or her emotions. Sitting in a box doesn't teach you how the box feels. Hmm. I see. In that case... I want to give her as little time alone as possible. Uh, I don't want to bathe with her, uh, alright? I know. I know. You're a boy and all. For her baths, we can send Bienfu. No, that's a bad idea. It'll have to be Mogulu. Or myself. Phew! <laughs> what sort of boundaries have you and Eleanor drawn? How do you sleep? We talk before bed sometimes. But it's not like I'm sleeping by her side mm. or anything. It's easier for me to tell when she wakes up if I'm dwelling inside her. Does she really? ever get out of bed at night? Not in my experience. And she sleeps so peacefully. <laughs> huh? When she's around you guys, she always looks so stern. But when she's sleeping, her expression is... softer, you could say. Hmm. She lets her hair down, too. And I think it's kind of prettier that way. <laughs> huh. So that's what he likes. Well, keep an eye on her, but... But? Watch out for the older girls. Huh? Teresa and Oscar sure seem close. 
I've known them since I was an initiate, but I've never seen them quarrel, not even once. Did you ever fight with your brother, Velvet? Yeah, I guess I did. Hmm. Sometimes I'd chew him out, and he'd sulk and stop talking to me, but I found that adorable too. You did? No matter how much he dug in his heels, or tried to talk like he was in charge, after a while he'd be right there trailing along behind me. Aww. Like a little puppy dog. Puppies are a lot more obedient. I always had to keep an eye on him. Little brothers are odd creatures. <laughs> Rokuro's a little brother. Is he adorable too? <laughs> Huh? I don't think a little brother who's out to kill you is in any way adorable. But Shigure seemed like he was having fun. Sometimes you just don't make sense. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> little brothers. Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I'm an only child. Hmm. Well then, that's perfect. You pretend the boy is your little brother. Huh? That's a bit extreme. But actually, when I'm talking with Lafayette, sometimes I think this is what having a brother must feel like. I could be Eleanor's brother. <laughs> Don't take any of this nonsense seriously, Lafayette. Malakim are just tools to exorcists. She can never think of you as her brother. Oh, mm. yeah. You're wrong. I've changed how I view Malakim. I know that's true because I can think of him as a brother. Right. <laughs> She's all talk. Don't believe her. It seems to me like you're the one who's treating him as a tool by really? forcing your own opinions upon him. Ooh, two sisters struggling for the affections of their brother. Eeny teeny candlestick. Which one oh, will boy. the puppet pick? How about an older brother instead? This doll? It looks like Bienfu. <laughs> ah, a keen hmm. eye you have, young man. That is a doll of the Empyrean Amenoch. That's... Amenoch? Empyrean Amenoch? Yep, no doubt about it. I've seen her with my own eyes. Real dignified, but not without a bit of a temper. You saw her? Why was she angry? Well, the Abbeys banned any profession of the Amenochian faith in Southgand, despite her popularity. Gotta assume that's what got her all bent out of shape. Mm. I tried talking to her, but no matter what I said, she was just like... <sighs> oh, that's the oh. one that we're Wait, looking for. Wait, that sounds like... And that low-energy goddess you saw? The doll you've got here looks like her? Yeah, more or less. Ha! Fortune smiles upon thee, weary adventurers. That listless goddess is none other than Grim. Grimoire isn't human? When did I ever say she was? True. So, shopkeep, where'd you see her? I think it was down by McClear Beach. Pensively watching the tide come in? That's her, all right. <laughs> Quickly, to the beach! Ugh. Why didn't you mention Grimoire as a Moloch before now? You can't be too careful with that information. Spies, spies listening everywhere! Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm gonna take the wild guess where we're supposed to go. Beautiful waters. So this is Muckler Beach. I hope she's actually here. Whoop. Time Take to dish out spankings. You, you won't you get, get a word. Crash through! Crash through! Twin whip! Twin crash through! Crash through! Fire crash through! Crash through! Crash through! Twin whip! 
I'll finish this! You're wide open! Bird! Eat it! This is the... You're wide open! Bird! That's all! Eat it! Assist! You're wide open! Bird! You're wide open! Bird! Running man! Eat it! You're wide open! Bird! Eat it! I'll help you! Eat it! There you go. Whew! I thought we were done for. Wait. There you go. This grimoire who we're hmm? searching for is a Moloch like Bienfu, right? To be honest, I don't see how someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Luffy said or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. <laughs> I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath yeah. your hat? Oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. Yeah. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Can I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? Why not? That's another thing I can't say! It's all cans with you. All right. Is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh, hmm. I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you. Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces, but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Hmm. Think of them as a convenient power-up. They're also known as okay, common then. spirits. Don't even say that! <laughs> we Norman hate being called that. Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable. That's why we work mm. so hard to show how we're all different. That does explain your yeah. quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> Don't say that! I swear the dialogue in this game. Okay. Up here. Whee. All right. Is that Grimoire? <sighs> She's moving away. Uh oh. Check that. A dragon? No, just a big lizard demon. Is he friends with Dial?
Crusher! How's this? No get escape! Get no get escape! He's a crash! 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 Crusher! You're wide open! Come Bird! Hubble! No. You're wide open! Split. Bird! You're wide open! Bird! You're wide open! Bird! Eat it! No escape! Crusher! No escape! Eat it! Crusher! You're not good! Guys like Beguile! Check that! Ooh, Illusory Veil! No Eat it! Check that! Devour. Crusher! Crash through! Moon like Cyclone! Eat it! No mercy! Wounds that won't heal! Carved into flesh! Lethal pain! <laughs> Obvious! Eat it! Slow down! Check that! Eat it! Devour! <laughs> What's this one? Building up strength. Be careful. How's this? Crusher! Up! You're wide open! Bird! How's this? Crusher! How's this? Eat it! How's this? Crusher! How's this? Crusher! How's this? Crusher! There we go. Come on! Put up some fight! Okay. So she's the same sort of Moloch as Bianfu? You're Grimoire, right? <sighs> We've been looking for you. We need your help. <sighs> Who are you? I'm Velvet. I know your witch friend. Oh. Grim, so wonderful to see you. It's been forever! <laughs> ah, you two. Still as outlandish a pair as ever, I see. How exactly do you know her? Which yeah. training? She was an upperclassman. And? We found 
this fascinating ancient tome, and we were hoping you could read it for us. Goodness, Magilu. You of all people joining a team? I didn't know you had it in you. Uh, that keep me entertained. Well, I don't need entertainment. Okay. Bien! Come on, Grim! Isn't there any way you can help us? It's not the kind of thing I do. Oh, what a shame. Things happen. Well, we tried, didn't we? <laughs> Maybe you she need did. some incentivizing. Do it. I'm serious. I bet you are. <laughs> Your eyes tell me you're dangerous. Trouble follows you like a hawk tails a rabbit. Uh, okay. And at my age, trouble is something I'd rather avoid. How old are you? Ask me again and you'll get a firework uh. in the tush. Uh, my apologies. It appears we've wasted our time. A walk on the beach is never wasted, but sorry. <laughs> well, how did you learn to read the ancient tongue? Are there books for studying it or something? My, my. Are you actually thinking of learning it on your own? Yep. Well, I love reading, and I want to learn more about history. Besides, we need what's in this book. You have yep. passion, child. I'll give you that. Not to mention you want to be helpful to Velvet, don't you, kid? <laughs> yeah. Aww. My tuition isn't cheap, you know. You will teach me? <laughs> no, I won't. But I admire your dedication enough Aww. to read it for you. Now where's this book? Here it is, ma'am. You needn't be so formal. <laughs> oh, uh, y yes, ma'am. Er, uh, not ma'am. Right. <laughs> Let's see what we're looking at here. The language of ancient Avarost. <laughs> Had to be the hard one, of course. <laughs> A lot of wear and tear, too. This will take some time. Okay. We're in a hurry. That may well be, but this isn't the place for study. Let's move to someplace more comfortable. Okay. Hmm, you've redeemed yourself, young man. There's a village called Haria just a little ways away. Okay. That works. Thank you. <laughs> Fine. Haria village. Whatever gets the job done. Agreed. I apologize if I'm being rude, but I have to ask. You're not Amenoch the Empyrean, are you? Of course I'm not. What would even make you ask such a thing? A well... shop in Isolt was selling Amenoch figurines that looked just like you. Oh, that. I distinctly remember whispering to the shopkeeper in his sleep, telling him not to sell those things. You showing up in his dreams probably only convinced him you were the real deal. You should sue for his use hmm. of your likeness and get proper compensation from that shopkeeper. Forget it. It's no concern. Oh, yeah, right. you're right. It's not like they'd ever sell anyway. Oh, you think a figurine of mine wouldn't sell? Uh -uh. You got this whole somber ennui thing going on. A figurine needs to be cute, like me. Then how about I turn you into a product? Me? Really? Um... Oh, yes. I'll have you stuffed and mounted. But since it'd be a unique piece, I'd have to price it a bit higher. M mounted? No, no, count me out! <laughs> oh, you're no fun. Now, what was it we were talking about? Whether or not you are the Empyrean Ominoch. Ah, yes, that's right. I'm no Empyrean. I'm just a simple girl. Mm. It would be hard for anyone to worship an Empyrean like me, right? That's true. 
<clears throat> oh, uh, I mean, it just seems like you're the type who can see through anything, so... Perhaps an Empyrean seems less intimidating from a certain point of view. You're yeah. saying I'm scarier than an Empyrean? Yeah. Not no. scarier, exactly. Just more of a savvy sort of woman. <laughs> That's not a bad answer. But it won't get you out of the doghouse. Oh, boy. Haria, isn't that the village with that demon that Oscar and Teresa were talking about? I think it might be. We should remain on our guard. Okay. That's Haria Village. To the inn! One and all! Just in case. From what we heard in Isalt, Demons are attacking villages, and more people are growing upset with the Abbey. So I hadn't expected things in Haria Village to be so laid back. They might be on their best behavior because you're accompanied by an exorcist. Huh. I didn't hmm. know you could see the world in more than just black and white. The Abbey wouldn't entrust my responsibilities to someone who couldn't see beyond the surface. I have seen many things in my work. I've beheld both the light and the darkness in the world of men. Hmm. Despite that, no, because of that, I won't turn away from the wrongs that I encounter. Moreover, I have faith. I believe there is good in all our souls. The darkness, huh? Yes, darkness. like you. You're awfully direct. We could use a place to stay. Any rooms open? Yep. Just finished cleaning, in fact. You can help yourself to that room there. Okay. All right, time to start deciphering this scroll. Let's wait somewhere outside so Grimm can concentrate. Um, do you think maybe I could stay and watch? I really <laughs> do want to study the ancient tongue. I promise I'll be quiet and not get in your way, teacher. <laughs> what did you just say, child? Uh... That I'd be quiet, and... No, what did you call me? Uh -uh. Teacher? You said you didn't want to be called ma'am, so I thought maybe that'd work. Oh. Yes, satisfactory. All right, I'll teach you how to read Ancient <laughs> Averost. Thank Aww. you so much, teacher! We'll leave you two alone then. Let us know if anything comes up. connection do you think there is between the violent demon Teresa mentioned and this village? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell Could there you. have been a demon blight breakout here? This village doesn't look like it's been attacked, but... Whatever it is. If it keeps the Abbey's eyes off us for once, that's good enough for me. You really will use anything and everything towards your own aims, won't you? Yep, and that <laughs> includes you, as I'm sure you've noticed. So she digs being called teacher. Well played, Laffy said. She wasn't so <laughs> fond of ma'am, so I guess he figured he needed an alternative. Yeah. You could tell how badly he wanted to help her with the language he work. I think our Moloch boy's finally finding himself. <laughs> so it would seem. Alright, where are the other two?
banning local religions. The Abbey sure knows how to oppress the populace. I'd imagine that comes part and parcel with spreading the good word. Other gods would only get in the way. From what yeah. we overheard, it sounds like they've taken over Amenoch's temple, Palamedes, to use as their base of operations. Sealing it off would be provocative enough, but straight up taking it over? Not a lot of so-called reason to that. Hmm. Unless... Do you think they need it for some other purpose? Could Shrug. be. I mean, you never know. I saw a chest. Okay. Oh, there you are. It sounds like deciphering the text might take some time. We should be prepared to wait it out here a while. Hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. Yeah. I hope so too. But hope ancient so. Avarost is complex. It's not just a matter of knowing the grammar and vocabulary. Oh? Then how exactly do you read it? I'm not sure about the specifics myself. But from what I understand, you kind of have to intuit a lot of it. A language based on guesswork? Thanks, old dead people. You're officially the worst. Hmm. <sighs> oh, ancient Avarost. You have the obstinacy of a spurned lover who refuses to move on. Even for you, teacher? It's this one crucial line. I can't wrap my head around it. What is it? Uh, well, from what you've taught me so far, it looks like it says, Sa, Popo, Mucho, Sanchon. I don't know what that Correct, means. But if you merely translate it word for word, it ends up saying, The parent hates tomatoes. The child eggplants. Hmm. I doubt those have much to do with the Nomi Knot. <laughs> yeah. Their grammar is nothing like ours. Sometimes you have to reorder the words, and even then the meaning can require leaps of logic and flashes of intuition. Hmm. Reordering? So, like, San San? Pocho Pocho? Pocho Musan? Pocho Musan. Can you read it that way? Hmm. Pocho Musan. Now where did you get that from? These words are lined up, like they repeat. And when I read this part that same way, it just felt right. Hmm. Interesting. Pocho Musan. Hmm. If that's repeated here, then... The passage the turns into... The Nameless Empyrean? The Nameless Empyrean. Empyrean! Ho oh, oh, ho, that has to refer to Innominat. I think we're on to something. All right, so if we apply this rule here, then... Hmm, hmm... It would seem to be a book of children's counting songs. Interesting. It's not about Innominat? What matters is what the song says, child. And I think you will be very interested in the words. Okay. I w Oops. wonder if they've made any progress yet. Shall we go check on them? Well, any results? Yes. Well, thanks to the boy here. <laughs> As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. Huh? <laughs> now, child, I'm sure they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. 
Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Hmm. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Crimson moon? The nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The nameless Empyrean hath one body. Therians? Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enominot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Yeah. Likely so, but if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm... What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. How so? The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body. But the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, sending it along Earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called... Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm... What about the second part? Yeah. I haven't studied much ancient history, but it's said this world was created by four Empyreans. Earth, water, wind, and fire. But they also call Enominot an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominot and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. Mm. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominot will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominot, everything lines up. Yeah. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominot's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? I don't know. Remember, the song states that the Therians and Enominot's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominot, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth Pulse points. Points? The place is where the power of Earth Pulses is concentrated. Places with that sigil? Hey, remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Oh yeah. Wait, are you trying to say that thing's Aetherian? And yet... It would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. That's two. That's right. Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logres and check? We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. True. Hmm. Something bothering you, Grim? This line. The one about Therians being forever reborn. Uh, I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places thought to be rich in spiritual energy. 
Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse point? Could be. There's lots of Earth Pulse points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. True. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Fair enough. Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Laffy said is sensing. Hmm. Just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian. What? What? Hmm. I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind. Good luck out there. Thanks. going to end it here um i hope that you all enjoyed and i will see you all in my next stream which is maybe tomorrow but i might postpone it to next week depending on how i feel tomorrow um i will see you with i will be playing judgment I think uh so yeah hope you all enjoy I'll see y'all next time bye